Okay, so um, you have learnt about point type and area type and why we need both of them in uh, any kind of design, whether it's graphic design, interior design, or whatever. So this little exercise is to help us to understand how to format text and to get some practice with it. So you'll see I have a piece of area, sorry, a piece of point type at the top here, area type and area type. And I'm going to format them. So I just want to do a few things to begin with. Just excuse the dogs barking. They're not mine. They're next door neighbors. Um, and I want to make sure that my rulers are showing. So if I click on a blank area, here's my rulers. So show my rulers. And I also want to right click on the ruler and make sure I'm in millimeters. And then we're going to create guides. So I'm going to drag one guide here. And then under the um, properties panel I'm going to set it to 10 millimeters on the Y okay and then I'm going to drag another one down here and set it to 290 oh 90 okay then on the vertical I'm going to set the X to 10 and I'm going to set another one to one three hundred I think it would be no um two ten two hundred okay there we go I forgot my dimensions for a moment and then um I'm going to actually uh do another guide to help me with my heading so I'm going to put that over there and I'll set the y value to 60 and another one a little bit further down set it to 65 okay so those guides are going to help me with um, organizing my stuff so all of this stuff I'm just going to move it out the way so that I can focus at the top here and I'm going to move this point text I'm going to switch to my type tool and I'm just going to click before the word South Africa and backspace to take away that space and enter to put that on a new line and then I'm going to double click on the word Durban to focus on that word first. So I'm going to change the font to, and I'm going to use simple, easy system fonts here so that you will have the same fonts. So you should have um, uh, something like Arial. I think pretty much every computer has Arial. So let's go with Arial. Of course, um, when you're doing your own work you would have your own font choices and then I'm going to click in the font size um, uh, number area here and I'm going to use my up arrow and I'm going to hold down shift so that it goes quicker and I want the size to go to a hundred points then I'm going to go here to tracking which is the distance between letters and I'm going to use shift up arrow to change the tracking to 180 then I'm going to go to the fill color over here or you can do, do the fill color here as well and I'm going to choose that red orange color go back to my selection tool and I'm going to place that text inside that area there all right and now um, I'm going to select the word Durban again and I'm going to make some further adjustments so I'm going to take the tracking up a tiny bit more so that it fits into that area and then I'm going to click on these three dots and I'm going to find vertical scale and I'm just going to push the size of those letters up a bit to 150 okay now back to my selection tool and now I can fit that word nicely in there. Okay, so now I'm going to focus on this uh, strap line, South Africa's playground. So double click to get to my type tool, or I can just choose my type tool and then select just those words. And I'm going to make that Arial narrow. If you don't have Arial narrow, choose another Arial 
flavor and then I'm going to put the font size up to 24 and I'm going to uh, set the tracking to 120 okay and I think that's okay and then the leading above that which is the distance between lines I'm just going to take the leading up a little bit to 20 points then I'm going to press command or control a whoops I need to click in here command or control a to select all and I'm going to align center so it jumps across there because it's point type and it centers on the point so I'm just going to drag it back into position now but at least I know that it is um, properly aligned to the center and then I'm going to put that text in that area okay so I'm happy with that all right, so the next thing is the deck, which is kind of the, the story, what's the, what's this about? You know, kind of the summary of your story. So I'm going to take my area type and I'm going to change the size of it so that it fits into the width of the uh, margins. And then I'm going to change some settings, but I'm not gonna select the text because if I change the settings without selecting specific text, it applies to everything in that text area. So I'm going to make this um, Arial Bold and I'm going to set the size up to 18 points and the leading, going to be quite generous with that and I'm going to change the fill color to a dark grey color. Okay, so I like to do that. When I use really heavy text, I tend to lighten the color so that it doesn't dominate too much. Then this little um, solid square at the bottom here, if I double click on that, it's going to resize the area to fit the text. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm gonna take this picture, move it out the way, and I'm now gonna take this area text, and I'm going to resize this box, this area to fit into the margins here. Exactly. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is take this image and I'm going to position it in the center of the page. I'm going to bring the size down. So I'm looking at about a width of 55 and holding shift so the height is proportional. And then I want the text to wrap around this picture all the time. So I'm going to select the picture, go to object, text wrap, make, okay, and then object, text wrap, text wrap options, I'm going to put preview on, and I'm just going to increase the offset to 10 points, so the text is pushed away a little bit further. All right, so now that I've got the picture positioned, I can now work with the text. So with the text frame selected, I'm going to set this just to ordinary Arial regular, um, and I'll set the font size down to 10 and um, I'm going to change the leading a tiny bit. I tend to think that professional text has generous leading um, unless it's tabloid style and then I want there to be two columns here so with this text frame selected I'm going to go to type, area type options, number of columns, two Let's put preview on to see what we get there. That's fine. And then the gutter, which is the space between the columns, I'll set that to 10. Okay, so that there's no mistaking that there's two columns and that you don't just think that you read across. Um, all right, so now we can do some further uh, formatting. So you'll see, if I zoom in here, you'll see that there's some headings. So here is history. So if I take history and I make that Arial bold and I increase the size a little bit and then I go to my paragraph settings to the three little dots and I'm going to set the space before to three points and the space after to two points. In fact, I'm going to make it five points before. 
and then I'm going to set the fill color to that same orange from from the heading orange red okay so we've got our heading then I'm going to take this paragraph I'm going to go to my paragraph settings and I'm going to indent it a tiny bit so let's make it 10 points indent and I think that's it okay I'm happy with that so now I can start to format the rest of it so I'm going to select activities take my eyedropper click on history take my type tool select this paragraph take my eyedropper click on that text and so on so I'm basically going through the document and just using my eyedropper to save me some time and let's go take this full paragraph here where does that paragraph end things to do let's see okay I think that's that paragraph so eyedropper Okay, and yeah, I think that's not too bad. Um, we might want to increase the distance in it between all the paragraphs. So I'm going to go back to my paragraph settings here and set the space before to three and the space after to three. Okay, so our paragraphs are distinguishable and then I'm just going to go back to this paragraph so if I double click I select the word if I triple click I select the paragraph and for this one I'm going to set the um, indent to 0 and the size to 12 and then the same for these paragraphs um, this paragraph here and this one so I'll use my eyedropper and pick up that there. Okay, so that's nicely laid out. Now the problem here is that um, this text is overset. That little red plus there is telling us that there's too much text. So we need to make some changes here. There's lots of ways of dealing with overset text, but um, probably the easiest way is just to adjust the leading or the font size. So I'm going to take this text here let's adjust the leading down to 12 okay there we go and here to be consistent let's also make that 12 all right so now I can hide my guides and hide my ruler and I've got some nicely laid out text I've got the things to do up at the top of the next column because what you don't want is a heading down the bottom of the first column and then running into the article on the next column. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and see you next time.